What I'm going to say is more or less can be found in the notes that our group uh, at the INSELM drafted and which you can find on our website. Um, and it's sort of going to be a continuation of what Laurence uh, spoke to us about, in other words, the inconsistencies in the law, <coughs> in the laws, but um, especially what I'm going to um, uh, emphasize is uh, the uh, fact that we, made, we have made quite a few proposals that might aid the legislator <laughs> in simplifying uh, what is really, really uh, a confusing context for French researchers. Um, <coughs> So since the decree of August 6th, uh, some progress has been made. We pointed this out in our note. Uh, from both the scientific and symbolic standpoint, the law, in fact, replaced what has thus far been a, a prohibition with um, the possibility to do research on the embryo um, from, um, in, an exceptional, in exceptional cases and uh, with approved, framed, uh, uh, authorization from uh, French authorities, notably the uh, ABM. However, despite this apparent uh, of advance, um, this apparent progress, uh, several uh, shady zones still persist, and Laurence did a very good job of, of showing those to us from a, a juridical standpoint. But from our standpoint, um, and from therefore from an ethical standpoint, if you will, a certain number of questions were not resolved by this uh, change in the law. The first is that the notion of a study on the embryo um, no longer is in the law. Uh, one only speaks of research on the embryo, but what does this mean from the standpoint of ethics? In addition, the question of informed consent is fundamental in research. How um, are we to formulate that adequately in the realm of research on the embryo? And this is not addressed at all in the uh, new decree, nor in the 2011 law. And finally, there are quite uh, a few, in fact, more than quite a few, um, numerous uh, surplus embryos, otherwise known as orphan embryos in American English, if you will, um, which course, which who, who do not correspond to what the French call projet parental, parental project, and are conserved and, and, and stocked throughout a number of, of ART centers, but their organization, their management is not. And how can we ameliorate that situation? Now, as a backdrop to these problems, we identified in our notes two possible sources of this uh, dilemma. The first is that as Laurent sort of um, said, in, in general, there's sort of a general consensus that research on an embryo would necessarily be a, an attack on its integrity or its, on its dignity, if you will. This gets us back to some of the uh, notions that Bernard gave us. And um, thus, um, only embryos uh, without a, a parental project should be researched on, which totally gets uh, p which totally uh, eliminates the possibility of doing research on an embryo and eventually reimplanting it. The second idea that seems to be generally conceded is that um, research made on embryos, um, research made on cells from an embryo uh, to the detriment of that embryo's finality uh, are also um, the source of what Laurence pointed out and a, con a constant uh, uh, lack of of coherency between the distinction between studying an embryo and doing research on an embryo. So the result of all this, of course, is uh, what we've been saying since the beginning of this afternoon, only now these figures don't correspond with some of the figures that Laura Colombat gave us, but these are the figures that we uh, printed out in the note. Only five research projects um, concerning the finality of the human embryo were authorized since 2006 in France, none since 2008. In Belgium, which is a country five times less populated than France, thir uh, 26 projects were carried out, authorized and carried out. So um, our 2014 note made several uh, propositions, proposals, if you will. I'm not going to develop each one in detail, you can read them for yourselves, but I'll just uh, mention and translate the uh, four main proposals of 2014. The first was to facilitate and promote research on the embryo, and that necessarily would, um, of course, be uh, f facilitated by an information campaign 
In other words, the Minister of Health or the Ministry of Research should become more vocal publicly about the importance of this type of research. Um, in, indeed, also soliciting more uh, financing from public organisms and, of course, probably what, in my opinion, is the most important is to m more rationally collect, stock, and distribute um, uh, frozen embryos in what we propose to be um, created, in other words, embryo banks. Um, the second proposal we made was to uh, rethink the framing of research uh, that, of course, must always remain uh, very, very uh, su supervised, overseen, and, and regulated, but should be more adapted to the terrain, more coherent, and more simple. And these were three, three, uh, three proposals that we made to achieve that goal. The third proposal we made in 2014 was to adapt the procedures of informed consent to the type of embryo research being carried out. And this is something that was very much highlighted in our notes. There isn't just one sort of research on the embryo. There are different sorts of researches on different types of embryos, be they uh, the object of a parental project or not, and that every single specificity linked to every single specific embryo should have its own specific um, modality of informed consent. And the fourth and last proposal of 2014 was to elaborate with all practitioners and researchers of ART um, under the responsibility of the uh, National Agency and of ITMO and the BCDE, uh, referentials and recommendations every time necessary and to renew them every time necessary. Um, our work uh, in the group continued then after this initial note, and in 2015 we were able to elaborate further on them and uh, produced four additional uh, proposals. The first uh, having to do with suppressing this famous article that Laurence uh, underlined, which is a creator of ambiguity and uncertainty. Um, the second was to uh, truly insist that there be a distinction made between um, research on embryos destined for or still within a, a parental project and those not, and also to distinguish between embryos that could be researched on and transferred in utero or not. In other words, to really could be in creating a, a, a category, a categorization of the type of embryos we are dealing with. The third proposal was, of course, to uh, devise a unique and simplified procedure to obtain authorization, uh, to cut out the bureaucracy, if you will. And the fourth and last uh, was to, um, in the event of performing research on an embryo that was to be transferred afterwards in utero, to ask the Agence de Biomédecine to consult with a committee that protects the interests of people, uh, Comité de Protection des Personnes, uh, if uh, their approval would be also necessary. And last but not least, um, a meeting was organized this year in March 2015 by the Comité d'éthique de l'INSERM and the ITMO and BCDE with representatives of people from the government um, and researchers and ART practitioners and experts in various centers of biological resources, et cetera. And they uh, produced a list of eight very specific uh, recommendations in addition to the ones that the CEOI, uh, that our group uh, provided for. And this is, I think, the first of its kind, the first meeting uh, of its kind, sort of synergy between um, those who are preoccupied with ethical issues and researchers themselves. And thus, there is still a lot of pain sur la planche, as we say. Thank you.